están? Estoy tan emocionada y agradecida por estar aquí hoy. Voy a compartir mi viaje personal de crecimiento y el poder de la ciencia y tecnología para mejorar nuestro mundo. No puedo continuar mi discurso en español, pero espero que lo disfruten. Hi everyone, my name is Manasa Mandu and I'm a 16-year-old from Mason, Ohio. I believe that you are never too young or too old or too inexperienced to see a problem in this world and try to solve it. And today I'm going to share my journey in this pursuit. Electricity should be all around us. It powers our homes, our schools, and our vital technologies. Yet over one-fifth of the global population lacks access to this fundamental. Living in suburban Ohio, I never thought twice about getting clean water from the pump or switching on the lights, but I realized the existence of this crisis when I traveled to India. Every summer, my family travels to India, and here we visit my grandmother's house, which is in a pretty rural area. There, we used to experience persistent blackouts, And for me personally, this meant no access to air conditioning in the heat of the summer. But when I witnessed the sight of children huddled around harmful kerosene lamps, I realized that this darkness was a permanent reality, and I wanted to do something about it. For those of us who do have access to electricity, Nearly 80% of it comes from non-renewable sources of energy, which are not only harmful to the environment, but are also depleting and are unable to provide for our high demand. And although we have existing renewable energy solutions, like solar, wind, and hydropower, they're not in widespread usage due to their dependency on a specific environmental condition and their high expense. We need a globally applicable and cost-effective renewable energy solution. What if we could harvest the unused potential of ambient environmental conditions that are all around us and convert it into usable power? What if we could do this using mainly recyclable and inexpensive materials? What if we could do this in a scalable way? Answering these questions led to the development of Harvest. Harvest is a renewable energy harvesting device that uses the piezoelectric effect to harvest wind and precipitation and organic photovoltaics to harvest sunlight in a single design. Shown above is Harvest 1.5. It is able to power a 15-watt LED bulb after three hours of charging, and it costs approximately $5 to manufacture. Now, what you're seeing up above was not the result of a single light bulb moment. It was a continuous expansion, a culmination of three years of hard work. Five years ago, I came across the piezoelectric effect while reading about the JR East Railway Station, a railway station in Japan which has these piezoelectric floors that are able to convert the kinetic energy of our footsteps into electricity. As an 11-year-old at the time, my mind was blown. I was like, whoa. This is the perfect renewable energy solution, and I wondered why I had never heard of this effect before. The next day, I found out that this piezoelectric effect was simply the ability of certain crystals and ceramics to produce an electrical charge when applied with some form of mechanical stress. For example, if I were to take two piezoelectric materials, like PVDF and PZT, and applied stress in the forms of tapping, pressing, or even the wind, they would produce an electrical charge. Like all beginners, though, I started off by Googling terms and building a very simple application. I built a piezoelectric tile that was very similar to the railway station concept. But what matters is what happens afterwards. 
Afterwards, I wanted to try different piezoelectric materials, different designs, and perhaps even an application in an unexplored field. After reading a pioneering study by Cornell University, I had a new idea. Why couldn't we use this effect to harvest low wind speeds under five meters per second that are all around us but are currently not usable by existing wind energy technology? Armed with one year of experience, I set off to create this wind energy harvesting device. And of course, my initial prototypes epically failed. <laughs> they barely produced microwatts of power. Yet I was undeterred because I believed in the potential of this idea. I realized that I could go about solving this problem in one of two ways. A, find a more efficient piezoelectric material, or B, apply more mechanical stress. And to resolve this issue, I turned to nature for inspiration. I, one day, while staring out the window, I observed the swaying of tree branches in a gentle breeze, and I realized I could emulate this motion and even enhance the power output. By attaching a synthetic leaf appendage onto the piezoelectric material, I was able to triple the power output. Another form of energy which is rapidly advancing is solar power. Alongside our silicon solar panels, we have organic photovoltaics, which are a more flexible and inexpensive version. Now, this warrants a question. Despite all of solar power's advantages, why does it still account for less than 5% of the world's electricity production? The answer partly lies in solar power's intermittent nature. Solar power is inherently dependent on the intensity of the sunlight for power production, and therefore, without effective energy storage solutions, it is inapplicable during nights and cloudy days. To resolve this issue, I decided to combine organic photovoltaics with piezoelectric effect to create a more consistent renewable energy solution that is dependent on multiple environmental conditions in a complementary way. And this is when Harvest was born. Harvest consists of energy harvesting leaves that are comprised of a solar foil surface and a piezoelectric stem. Whenever these leaves are bent due to the impact of wind or precipitation or is exposed to sunlight, they produce an electrical charge. And these leaves can be applied in a variety of designs. For example, in Harvest 1.5, I attach three of these energy harvesting leaves onto a recycled water bottle to create a small, portable, easily mass-producible energy harvesting device. Next, I sought to apply harvest in a more scalable way. And I did this by attaching the leaves onto a vertically mounted structure, metallic mesh. And as you can see, harvest is not limited towards just this three-leaf appendage design. It can be applied on a variety of scales. There are several applications for harvest, whether it's used directly on the surface of buildings in urban areas to integrate renewable energy harvesting into the urban landscape, or even used in rural and remote areas to provide a localized source of power during emergency situations, or even used in developing countries to provide for basic necessities. Although I have achieved some recognition for my work so far, my journey is far from over, as there is so much potential to improve the efficiency and practicality of harvest, whether that is through integrating more efficient piezoelectric material, different energy harvesting phenomenon, or even conducting more field testing. Along with harvest, I've worked on several other projects, one of which is aimed at reducing the damage of plant disease. Plant disease currently accounts for 10 to 30 percent of the total crop output losses worldwide, a number that's expected to grow with effects of climate change in our increasingly homogenous agricultural system. The key to reducing this damage lies in early and accurate detection. However, existing tools, such as the visual inspection by plant pathologists or even lab-based techniques, are inaccessible to many. Well, I initially found inspiration for this problem within my family's vegetable garden. For smallholder farmers, effective plant disease diagnosis and management is often the difference between having or not having access to economic and food security. This is why I worked on Leaf AI. Leaf AI is an automated tool that allows users to detect and manage plant diseases with a simple smartphone image. Leaf AI uses a 
machine learning algorithm that can identify common symptoms of viral, bacterial, and fungal diseases that appear on the leaves of plants. And here's a video of it in action. More than being named a Google Science Fair global finalist or winning in the Microsoft AI for Good Ideas challenge, what has been the most meaningful in this process has been being able to share this technology with people who are directly affected by the problem. Pictured above is Steve, an industrial engineer turned family farmer. Hearing Steve's enthusiasm for the applications of AI in agriculture or his suggestions on how to make Leaf AI more practical has been one of my highlights in this journey. The issue with this energy crisis or plant disease problem is not the fact that we have some sort of scarcity of ideas or solutions to help solve it, but rather the fact that we're enabled to get these solutions to the people who need it the most. That is why my goal is to not only further enhance the accuracy or efficiency of leaf AI in harvest, but to be able to actually deploy it to impact at, li at least one life. Throughout this process, I've learned three very important things. First, don't be afraid of failure. Failure is an important, if not inevitable, part of the journey. And I know that this is very easy for someone else to say, but there were many times when I failed, when my prototypes did not succeed or were criticized, when I thought that I was not good enough. But if I had stopped or not believed in myself, I wouldn't be up here today. Two. <laughs> Two, inspiration comes in all forms. I found inspiration halfway across the globe, in my backyard and within nature. You just have to maintain that childlike sense of wonder and be open-minded and get ready to be inspired. <laughs> um, and three, Collaboration is key. To solve these huge global problems, we must come together as communities with our differences and diverse ideas. And while I'm the one speaking here today, I could not have done it without the support of my amazing group of mentors and my wonderful family. Before I leave the stage, I'd like to leave you with this. You are never too young or too old or too inexperienced to see a problem in this world and try to solve it. I say try because initially you will probably fail again, again and again and again, but eventually there comes a success and a chance to impact lives. Thank you. Thank you.